You may have seen Facebook posts or tweets claiming that refugees get more government aid than seniors, people on social assistance, or veterans. Well, let me say right off the top, it's not true. So how much do refugees and immigrants get in social assistance? Let's break that down based on information from the federal and provincial governments. Starting with immigrants, they get the same amount of social assistance as other Canadians, with one exception. When a citizen or permanent resident sponsors a relative as part of the family class, that sponsor is responsible for any income assistance their relative gets. Taxpayers are not on the hook for any of that. Okay, but what about refugees and what about those people who are walking across the Canada-US border seeking asylum here? Well, that depends on whether they're government-sponsored, privately-sponsored, or a mix of both. Let's start with privately sponsored refugees. They don't receive any government assistance for the first year, although they do have access to federally funded services like language training and health care through an interim federal program. All their other costs are covered by whomever is sponsoring them, whether that be a religious organization or community group. After their first year, if refugees haven't found work, they're eligible for social assistance or disability benefits at the same rates as Canadian citizens. That rate varies from province to province. Government-sponsored refugees are the second category. They're supported under a federal resettlement program for one year or until they become self-sufficient, whichever comes first. As of July 2016, the annual maximum amount is $50,000 per family, depending on how many people there are. That includes a one-time payment to set up their household. After one year, they become eligible for provincial social assistance at the same rates as other Canadians are. The third category of refugees is a blended visa office referred program. They get federal assistance for the first six months, private sponsors pay the other six months. But did you know refugees who were resettled from abroad actually owe the government money? That's right, the Canadian government asks them to repay the cost of traveling to Canada. The maximum loan is $10,000, even for large families of eight people or more. It's interest-free for one to three years, and then refugees have up to six years to repay it, depending on how much money is involved. And even though that's a lot more than some of these families earn in a year, 91% of them manage to pay back those loans. That brings me to asylum seekers. They've been in the news a lot lately for crossing the border on foot. Asylum seekers don't get any of the federal resettlement assistance that other refugees get. In fact, they usually live in emergency shelters or with friends and family when they first get here. But they can apply for provincial social assistance once they're deemed eligible to make a refugee claim or while they're waiting for their hearing. They're covered if their claim is accepted or if they're in the appeals process. They get the same amount as Canadian citizens and there's no cap on it. So no matter how many people apply, everyone gets the same amount. Meanwhile, their children can go to public school as soon as they have a permanent address. And they can access legal aid in six provinces. Ottawa covers most of that cost. Now, it's important to note that refugee claimants are eligible to apply for a work permit, and most of them are pretty eager to support themselves. I know, the big question is, does an increase in refugees and immigrants mean less social assistance for other Canadians? We spoke to a number of experts, and their consensus is no. But a sudden influx of refugees could have an impact on housing, for example. Ottawa gives the provinces a lump sum for affordable housing, so more immigrants and refugees could mean more people vying for limited spots. On the other hand, federal transfer payments for affordable housing are doled out on a per capita basis, so that means an influx in refugees and immigrants could mean more money coming to the provinces. You might be wondering, how quickly do refugees become self-supporting? Remember the boat people? 60,000 Vietnamese who came to Canada between 1979 and 81? Well, within 10 years, 86% of them were working and speaking English with some proficiency. Bottom line, experts say refugees give back more to Canada than they might cost at the beginning, and that's a net gain. If you want to read or watch more on our coverage on immigration and refugees, check out the links below.